Knowles on the News. Susan Knowles. Well, here we are on a day that I think many of us were hoping would come. Weren't sure if it was going to happen or not. I tell you, watching the election returns was an absolute nail biter. I don't remember the last time, maybe back when George Bush and Al Gore were running, uh, that I that I cared so much about what the election was going to be and how it was going to turn out because it was it was so close at times. And yet, at other times, you, you could just sit there and, and know if you just got Michigan, if you just got Pennsylvania. And yet, they weren't willing to call it to allow Donald Trump to to get victory before, what was it, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning? I don't even know. East Coast time. Um, and I was on the West Coast, and it, it just exhilarated, tired, emotions all over the place, praying. I don't know about you, but I did a lot of praying. I, I did a lot of praying before this election. I did a lot of praying yesterday. And I just kept saying saying over and over, you know, God, give us, give us an opportunity. Just, just once, let the good guys win, you know. Let, let good triumph over evil on this earth for once. Please allow it to happen. Don't allow evil to continue to be in the White House or ever step foot into the White House ever again. Those were my prayers. I'm just going to be totally honest with you. I I can't imagine what uh, it would have been like had the elections turned out differently. Do I sit here today thinking that all of our problems are solved? No. Do I sit here today thinking that we have elected the perfect president? No. He is a man. He is human, just like you and me. If either one of us had gotten in as president, I would be saying the same thing. It's You're not going to get a perfect president. But what you are going to get is someone who I believe truly loves America. I don't know if you were up yesterday and, and you heard that that speech, his victory speech. But, oh my gosh. It's what we Americans have been longing for. For the past eight years. You know, I, I've been one of those people. I've been very critical of uh, Donald Trump in the past. Should I say president-elect Donald Trump now? Uh, but I've been very critical of, of him in the past because he didn't have a unifying message all the time. Uh, he he divided this country in a lot of ways in the beginning. And I remember, for me, I was, I was absolutely for him in the beginning. And then when he started the division, I kind of fell away because of the fact that we cannot have a United States of America unless we are unified, unless we are united. And when he started turning back around, when somebody took him aside and and probably said, you have to stop talking this way, you know, it's good for TV, but it's not good for America. And somewhere he gained some wisdom and started listening. And last night's speech was amazing. It was humble. It was unifying. And I, wow, I was was in tears. I really was. We, We have been longing to hear that. And I want to play you just a little part of that speech so you can hear what I mean. This is, this is the very beginning. It's about two minutes long, but I, I want you to hear a humble Donald Trump. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated. Thank you very much. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard-fought campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. Hillary has worked 
very long and very hard over a long period of time. And we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. I mean that very sincerely. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. To all Republicans and Democrats and independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. It's time. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans. And this is so important to me. When is the last time that you could ever remember in eight years anybody ever saying that and really meaning it? I I really think that Donald Trump does mean that he is for every American and that he wants to unify this country and bring us all back together and make this country not what it used to be, but make this country better than it used to be. And I was so thrilled last night to hear him. First time I've heard this in eight years. To hear him talk about veterans and what we're going to do for veterans. And you know what? You, me, and everybody else, we have to hold him to that promise. It is long past time that veterans get what they deserve for serving this country and for serving so diligently, giving up their lives for our country. We have to hold this country absolutely accountable to make that happen. No more just talking about it, but doing it. And I think that's going to take a lot. I mean, I think people that are in their jobs today, some of these people who have been sitting there on the government dole, taking all kinds of money, it's the day of reckoning. You're going to find out that the American people deserve better, that they deserve that when you go and you say, I'm going to do a job, whether it's representing veterans, homeless, or just the average American citizen, that you're expected to do your job well, that you're not just going to get a paycheck and sit there and do absolutely nothing. Now, again, I, I, don't, I don't think that our country is going to be overnight healed, but I think we, we are on our way to healing. And I don't know about you, but I, I just feel a, a sense today of we can't let this momentum fall and, and, and not take it to a place that it needs to go. And by, by that, what I mean is this. Before the election, God was in control. After the election, God is still in control. And I, I honestly do feel that we've been given a reprieve. We have been shown that if we turn back to God and if we pray, then God will hear us. And, and God heard us last night. Now, you may not think that Trump or anybody else in an election has anything to do with God. Well, we all have something to do with God. We are God's children. So we all are connected to God. And in some ways more and some ways less than. But we are connected. And I think that many of us, <laughs> for months, were praying for direction, some for direction, and who do I vote for? Can I vote for Trump? Uh, do I vote for a third party? Do I, do I not vote at all? Which, for me, was never an option. But for some, it was a true option. And what you saw last night was the majority of Americans coming together, those Americans who said and prayed for months, I want something better. I want to have America, an America that I remember. Just give me any semblance of America. We are out of control. And as you saw the maps, as it came up state after state after state, it was a sea of red. And it was magnificent, (laughs) if I can use that word today. It was absolutely magnificent to see that happening. And I, I, I think, you know, people on Facebook, I have uh, African-American friends, Facebook friends, some I know, some I don't. Uh, I have Hispanic Facebook and otherwise friends. Uh, I have you know, Caucasian, you know, you name it, a diverse group of individuals on Facebook. And one of the main concerns for people who are African-American is that 
that blacks were going to go ahead and just once again toe the line, you know, vote for a Democrat no matter what. The same Democrats that have basically broken up the family and continues to do so and continues to have them and all of us dependent upon them. And I think if you're African American today, I don't speak for you, but I think you have to be pretty darn happy. The fact that they didn't do it. Because if they had, if the majority of African Americans had gone out and voted for Hillary Clinton, we'd have a different turnout. You know, we'd have a different uh, result than we do today. We would have elected Hillary Clinton, God forbid. You know, and, and so you should be happy that some people actually woke up and heard that they were going down the wrong path and they changed course. And I think this election, you know, it it has been a very divisive election. I had someone yesterday who was not happy about the fact that I wouldn't tell them who I voted for. And I do that for a reason. Because I don't want people following what I'm doing. I want people deciding what they want to do. It's not my business who you voted for. It's none of your business who I voted for. It's it, and if it's another area, it, it's none of it, it's none of my business what you do. It's none of your business what I do. My personal life is my personal life. And that person decided that because she didn't know whether or not I had voted for Trump or not that she was going to unfriend me. And she did. And I've seen so much of that. We have torn each other apart. And I I have not been a part of that. Because I felt from the very beginning, I still feel this way. As Americans, as someone in America, in our freedoms, we are free to choose. We are free to choose to vote, not to vote. Vote for Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, whatever the case may be. It's our choice. And we have to learn to respect that about other people. We don't have to agree with them. We don't have to like it. But we need to start respecting others and not tearing them down. We need to work together. I don't know if if everybody can put you know, their feelings of the past and, and how they've been hurt. I don't know if you can put that aside. Me, here is my pledge. I'm not going to waste another moment. I feel that because many of us in America have humbled ourselves before God, have prayed and turned to God throughout this election, that he has given us a reprieve. However long, I don't know. I'll take what I can get. And I'm going to work and do everything that I can to get the message out, to do what I can to work with others, to make this country something that all of us are proud of, to help heal this country, to bring black, white, Hispanic, Asian, everyone together. We, we can't do anything divided. We have been divided for eight years We've had a president who has deliberately, in my opinion, torn us apart. And we have to recognize that what just about happened. And I'm not in a position today, I'm not gloating. I'm not calling those people who voted for Hillary or those people who didn't want to vote for Trump or the never Trumpers or the this or that. I'm not calling those people and doing a little happy dance because there's nothing to gloat about. We got by on the skin of our teeth because we turned back to God. And the moment we forget that, the moment we think that this is all about Donald Trump or anybody else, we will go down the wrong path again. We need to unite. We need to work together. We need to remember who is in control. It's not you. It's not me. It's not Donald Trump or Mike Pence. It's God. And we have to remember that and and pray and continue to pray fervently, just like you did during the election. 
pray to God that we continue on the right path. And I think one of the things to me that was so amazing in this election, and I've seen pictures of it, Israel, in large numbers, were praying for us. I don't know the last time I've ever seen that where they were praying for us. And I know that we pray for Israel. We need to do more of it. As we're praying for the United States and our healing here and where we're going in the future together, we need to pray for Israel. I think in having Donald Trump elected president, we have cemented our relationship with Israel and we have told them that the United States is your friend. And the United States will not turn their backs on you. Because right now, I don't think under this administration, Obama's administration, I'm not comfortable in saying that because I don't believe it. I don't believe that if anything happened to Israel tomorrow that we would be there in Israel's defense. I just don't believe that. But under Donald Trump, I do absolutely 100% believe that that would happen. And, And again... Donald Trump is not perfect. He's a human being just like the rest of us. We have to, you know, I think for the past eight years, while we have, like myself, been on the radio, we've written about things, and and we've worked hard, we need to plot a new course. This course did not work. It did not take us to a good place. We have to become more hands-on within our government. We have to communicate to this president, to the president-elect. We have to communicate with him and continue to communicate with him and what we, the American people, want. He works for us. The government works for us. And we have to remind them of that. And I think in a lot of respects, we reminded them in this election that they don't you know, we're not working for them. They don't, they don't control things. We do, ultimately. Because you, to get that many people together, and the popular vote was also for President-elect Donald Trump. To get that many people together, it's sending a message. And I'll tell you, we have control of the House. We have control of the Senate. And that means that we can elect Supreme Court justices that can turn begin to turn this country around it's an amazing position for us to be in and we can't waste one precious moment of what we've been given we didn't deserve it we didn't earn it but we've been given that opportunity from God and we have to continue doing what we can doing our best and remembering that but for God we would have had a different outcome And I think as we move along, I I don't know what President-elect Donald Trump is going to do in regards to Hillary. I would think that hopefully that he would carry through on his promises to uh, assign a special prosecutor. I I don't know if he's going to do that or not. Because he may feel that it it, it weighs the country down too much. But but here's, here's my personal thoughts. Far too long in this country, far too many people who are elites, and and make no mistake about it, the Clintons are the elites. They've been in power far too long. And there are others, the Obamas and other people who sit there and want to control everything that we do. We need to send a message that you are going to be treated just like us. That you are going to have to abide by the same laws that every citizen in this country abides by. That you are no better. That you are no different. And that you will be held accountable for what you do. And I would not want to see Donald Trump not move forward in doing that. I think the American public deserves the ability to have our leader go forward and and right the wrongs of this country. For those people who have broken the rules, there needs to be justice. I don't care who it is. And, and again, what I think with Donald Trump is that he does look at everyone within the United States 
as somebody who he should help, that somebody that he should serve, somebody that he should treat like everyone else. You know, whether whether you're veterans, whether you're minorities, whether you're, you know, another special group or, or whatever you are. I think he feels that we're all Americans and that all Americans need to be helped. Now, I, I think going forward, there will be some things that he does. We're not we're absolutely just not going to like. We're not going to agree with. But I think the majority of things we probably are going to like and we are going to agree with. And it's up to us to kind of set the course to where this country is going to go within the next four years, with the next eight years, and hopefully beyond that. But I, again, I, we don't have time for gloating. We don't have time to say, oh, told you so. <laughs> you know, or I don't want to be your Facebook friend because you didn't do what I wanted you to do. No, stop it. Stop it. Start respecting people and start gathering together and drawing together on those things that you do agree upon and let everything else go. This country is in a serious position of hurt right now. We have been dragged down for eight years. We have had our president apologize all across the globe for, for Americans, for this country. Never again, I say never again, will I sit back and not lead the charge on any president that tries to do that in this country. And I know you feel the exact same way. You know, this president got a, a pass on a lot of things because he was the first African-American president. I'm tired of things like that. I know it's not politically correct to say, but you know what? We need to elect presidents from here on out. And I think we did last night, but from here on out, we need to elect a president based upon character, not based upon skin color, not based upon gender, or whether you have lady parts or not. It has to be on the character of the person and what that person can do and what we believe that person can do to continue to make this country thrive. I mean, I, I don't know how many people I saw, oh, Hillary, you know, and they're crying because, oh, I can, I can elect a, a female. Oh, my gosh. I don't want a female. I want a president. I don't want a male. I want a president. I don't want an African American, a Hispanic, a Caucasian, a, an Asian. I want a president. Someone who looks at America and says, I love America and actually means it. And knows what this great country can do. And know what we have done in the past and what we will do in the future. We help everyone. That's not going to change. We're just going to get better at how we do it. And we're going to get better at helping people right here in this country. And I hope that you feel the way I do. That you, that you will join together with me. We have so many things that we need to do. I mean, there's so many things. Healthcare, Obamacare. It's not affordable. They knew it was going to go up double digits. They knew it wouldn't be affordable, and they wanted it to happen. Because you know why? Because they wanted you to get to a point where you said, Oh my gosh, please help me, government. Help me. I need more money from the federal government and my state government, or I'm not going to be able to pay Obamacare. And each and every time you do that, you become more dependent upon the government teat. I'm done with that. I want to see a time, and, and I know there are people listening out there. I've had discussions with millennials who say, what was it like under Reagan? I don't think we're going to have Reagan again. Reagan was Reagan. We're going to have Donald Trump. We're going to see what Donald Trump can do. And you know what? Maybe he will surpass Reagan. There's always a possibility. And maybe he will make this country thrive. I know many, like you and me, your paycheck is gone. You know, you get your paycheck at the end of the day. There's nothing left. After you've paid for everybody else's health care, uh, everybody else's food stamps and everything else. And, and listen, let me just tell you something. I don't mind doing that, A, if a person is here legally, and B, 
If a person is not able to help themselves in any way, I'm all for it. But I'm not all for just handing over my money to somebody else who is able to work or who should not be here. We've had too much of that. We've had too many people being here, being here, coming here and staying here illegally and killing people and committing other crimes. Just as a 10-year-old girl, beautiful 10-year-old girl, my God, you, you look at her picture and she is, she's an angel. And to know allegedly that her uncle, who is illegally here in this United States, killed her, breaks my heart. He was deported, he came back, and he's being accused of killing her. And, and how many more times do we need to hear this? And I know people are afraid. Oh, what's Trump going to do? Is he going to close the borders? You know what? I think what Trump is going to do, what he said, and, and people, you know, they wanted to panic. They wanted to make it something else other than what it was because it, 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 they were hoping Hillary would get elected and open the borders and open the doors and have everybody here. You know, more Muslim Brotherhood people in the White House that she wanted in, uh, more people that maybe she bought and sold, you know, whatever. <laughs> we haven't gotten into the Clinton Foundation yet. We don't know all the ins and outs and what go has gone on there and how many got pay to play, if at all. Okay, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a allegedly. All right, but we have to, we have to stop all that. We have to stop people who who try to fear monger uh, so they can get their way. E enough of that. It's over for you. And I I'll tell you, here's another thing that I want to be over. I, I don't know about you, but I seriously want this. I am so tired of the media and the corrupt people in the media. Not all media is corrupt. Not all people in media are corrupt. But those that have tried their darndest to do what they could to swing this election over to Hillary who constantly bombarded the news with fake stories about Donald Trump. Those people need to go. We need to not only clean out our politicians that are corrupt and those that should never be in political office in the first place, but we need to get rid of the media, those in the media that are corrupt, those that should never have been there. We need to stop listening to them. We need to stop spending our time doing that. And we need to expose them for who they are. And, and none of that is going to happen overnight. It is going to take time, but it needs to happen. I, I would say that today that we have far more individuals like myself and others who really try to give you the truth, who really try to express to you how they feel now people who are in the private industry like myself our difficulty comes in that I don't have the same access that the media does to getting things out I have to look at what others say and, and kind of surmise whether I believe it's truthful or not try to get it out to you if I think that it is try to tell you what I believe is not being said to you what you're not being told and having to look around at, at, at different countries to see what's being said there uh, that's not being said here. What, what, are, what's being, what are we being lied to about this time? Okay, things like that. If I had better research uh, tools and better ways to get that information, it would be, I'd be unstoppable. But, of course, that takes donations. <laughs> yes, there is a donation button on my website at SusanKnowles.com if you would like to donate. Because we need to get the message out. And we need people to be told the truth again. Whether it's this president we're telling the truth about, or the president-elect, or anybody else in, po in politics. We need to get the word out. It's important. It's important for us going forward in this country. You can't build a country based upon lies. And we have to figure out a better way to get the word out to people. 
I mean, there are so many people who want to disconnect and never hear anything about the news and politics. I get that. But, you know, the rest of us can't keep allowing you to just bury your head in the sand and carry the water for you, okay? We, we can't do that. We need your participation, too. Every person is important. Every person's participation is paramount in this country. It's the only way to fix things. It's the only way to fix our, you know, children's future. It's the only way to get our country back on track. And does that mean we're all going to agree? No, we're not going to agree all the time. There are going to be times when you and I are going to be on total opposite ends. But that doesn't mean that we can't find a middle ground to come together on. We need to start doing that. And we need to stop looking at people as though everybody who doesn't absolutely agree with us is our enemy. We can't do that. You know, I know people may may hate it when I talk about God, but, you know, that's, that's who I am, and I'm going to do that. And, and here's what I'm going to say. I think we've gotten away, and, and we've, we've called it cliche, or we laugh about it. What would Jesus do? Okay? We should have that in our heads all the time. When you see somebody who is absolutely disagreeing with you on the other end of the spectrum and you're thinking oh my gosh I I can't I can't handle this we'll never come together uh you know it's useless I'm just going to start insulting them and I'm going to leave okay because that's what I've seen a lot of it lately I think we all need to stop ourselves and say what would Jesus do and I I am in that same boat as everybody else Do I always make the right decision? Do I always treat people respectfully? No. No, I don't. Because I am human just like you and everybody else. But I need to spend more time thinking, okay, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? And then move forward that way. Because I I think that's how we're going to have to have to work. We're going to have to work together. And we can build those bridges. You know, all of us want to have and see a great future for our country, for our families, for our children, for, for everybody that we know and those that, we, that are coming in the future. We really want to see that. We have that in common. We may not go the same way to get there. We may have difficulties in, in figuring out how to work with people in order to get there. But we need to know that we are all working, almost all of us, okay? I'd say 98%. That's a pretty good number. That we're working on the same things and we really, really want the same things. And we just need to to remember that. And And we need to remember to treat people with respect. Because I think that far too often it's just easier, you know, when you're sitting behind your your computer, you're on uh, Facebook or whatever social media, it's just so easy to treat people with disrespect because you don't have to sit there face to face with them. And it's ridiculous. You know, when I write articles sometimes, people will just say sometimes the nastiest thing. Because to them, I'm not a human being. I'm just, you know, an article, and they can they can criticize it or judge it. And, and I, I don't care if you criticize or judge my article. It's when you come at me personally that I have to draw the line. It's ridiculous. But you have to remember, I'm a human being, just like you are behind that profile picture, wherever, wherever, whatever social media platform you're on. We have to remember that about each other. And I think far too, you know, far too long now. You know, when you have an administration that wants to tear us apart, we start taking that on and, and doing that in our everyday lives, even though we know that we don't like it when the administration does that. So we just need to keep remembering that as we move forward. I'm excited about the prospect of moving forward under a president-elect Donald Trump. You know, I want to see where this country can do, can go. I know we have the know-how. We have the people. We have the intelligence. I want to see where we can go. And we can bring people along with us. You know, they may be screaming and kicking, but we can bring them along with us if we just just continue to focus on where on what we need to focus on. Now, I tell you what's going to be difficult is for the next, until January. Oh, until that day where 
you see Obama get on that helicopter or how whatever he's going to get on golf cart, whatever, and just leave, leave the White House. Will he go away? No. Unfortunately, you know, it's like a bad penny. Things sometimes they just don't go away. But we don't have to focus on him. We just have to focus on where we're going. But we, for the next couple of months, who knows what he's going to do? What kind of agreements he's going to try to enter us into? He's already, any anything globally, anything with climate change, you know, he's already started to do that. Uh, when we when we get focused on something and we're not really watching the news, and not that they're telling us anything, but when we're not doing research or not listening to others who do watch the news, like myself all the time, um, we get lost. And, and then what does he do? Well, he goes out and, and just enters us into any type of agreement because guess what? We're not going to do anything about it. Well, that's got to stop. <laughs> we have got to start standing up. And challenging things that we don't like. And I don't care if they're uphill battles or whatever they are. You know, look, again, I know I say this a lot. ACLJ, J. Seculo. My gosh. Without those people, we wouldn't have half the things that we have as far as the legal rights that we have. The things that they have fought for. It's amazing. They continue to do work. That's amazing. They need money, too. Support them as well. It, they do tremendous work. And we need people who are willing to do that kind of work. You know, I'm willing to do what it takes if I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, what God wants me to do, what's best for this country. And as long as you keep listening to me and you want to hear what I have to say, I'm going to keep speaking out. I, I sound the alarm. That's what I do. <laughs> That's my job, sound the alarm. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be moving forward in this administration with President-elect Donald Trump to see what he has in store for America. Hopefully they are in line with what you and I believe they should be. And if not, we'll tell him they're not. The American people spoke last night, and they spoke in volume, record, record amounts. <laughs> I mean, amazing. I, I only wish in my own state that it had had been like that. I, I would have, I wanted so badly for California. I know it was, you know, against all odds. But I wanted California just to go red. Just one time. I think maybe the last time was Reagan. I'm not even sure they did then, but I, I think they did. Because he was from California, governor of California. And and California at that point used to be more conservative. And And, and I tell you, I think one of the things that we need to start looking at in this country places like California they California in my opinion needs to be divided up I mean we have a very conservative end of California and then we have a very liberal progressive left leaning California and those people who are on the right hate it they really do and they they don't have a voice in California because of uh, because of that fact. But if California were divided up, and people have suggested that for a long time, maybe that's something to look into, uh, then I think California, you would see more red in California. The people I met yesterday out voting, they were for Trump. Uh, you could tell by what they were saying. And and yet, you know, it was uh, it probably like a third of the people voted for Trump in California and the rest, of course, you know, went to Hillary. Oh, I am i don't know about you, but I think one of the things that I am uh, so thankful for about Hillary not getting in is, if, is the fact that maybe what we, how we treat and handle abortions in this country will change. I'm praying for that as well. The thoughts of her being for aborting a baby, even at the time of birth, basically, before the, the, the final part of a human body, of a living, breathing human body has come out of the birth canal. The thoughts that you could terminate, I'll just say, terminate that that life at that point, to me, was absolutely absurd 
absolutely. I mean, why do we why did we put Gosnell in, in prison if if that was something that was okay uh, to do? And that Hillary was for. I never understood a person, you know, with grandchildren that could be for that type of, and in the way I see it, murdering a, a, a life. I, I just don't get it. And, and I, feel, I feel for those people who, are, you know, who are doing abortions, who see that and who know something is wrong and it's tearing their souls apart. And I pray for those people that they will leave what they're doing, that they will say no more. And I know that Dr. Alveda King works so hard in trying to save lives and, and try to, to get women not to abort their babies. We've got to have a better way in the United States to take care of that. I, I don't know about you. I don't want to see one more life lost to abortion. And I know that just saying it is not going to stop it. I know that even as I speak right now, women are choosing to abort their, their babies. We, we've got to do something else. I mean, I, I think one of the reasons that maybe, you know, we haven't been so blessed in this country as, as of late is that we are continuing to just abort babies right and left and, and pay for things of Planned Parenthood. We need to offer, you know, those women who say, oh, but Planned Parenthood, that gives me the birth control and, and, and the women's uh, health and all that. Okay, you know what? You and I know the truth about what Planned Parenthood is about. But if we need to do a better job in helping women with women's care uh, so they won't abort their babies, I'm all for that. That doesn't mean I think that we should... Uh, you know, pay for everything that they want. I'm not saying that. But I think the money that we give to Planned Parenthood, we need to start giving to other organizations that will not be doing abortions. That will actually look and do mammograms and look for more and in, into women's health care. I'm all for that. I, You know, if you want to take my money, I would rather you take my money for that than to abort babies. I, I can't stand the thought to that and I know that many of you listening feel the same way I'm not judging those people I'm just saying I want to help you find a better way and I know there are many centers even in California <laughs> that help you choose a better way than aborting your child and I, I know women freak out when they hear other people women or men talking about their rights to abortion but I think there needs to be a better way of educating people uh, into what to do before you get to that point. How to protect yourself so against pregnancies. Uh, how to, if you are pregnant, what help you can get in order to have another solution that you don't have to abort your child. I, I want to help in that any way that I can. Because it's important. We should not be killing babies. Period. I, I don't know about you. I'm extremely exhausted today. <laughs> I, was, I was up very, very late watching the victory speech of uh, President-elect Donald Trump. And then afterwards, it was very difficult to sleep. I, I just don't know how to impart to you the message is that you know, we have, I feel in, in many respects, been given a clean slate to start again and to maybe get it right. Not perfect but to get it right, to do our best, to, t to stay vigilant, to stay active, to not sit home and watch things on TV uh, that, that we shouldn't watch, that don't do, that don't help us, uh, that don't help us with our families, that don't help us in our walk with God or in helping other people. If it's mindless tripe, turn it off. You know, do something else. Write a book. Write an article call a friend, talk to them about how you think things should be and how we work together to get there. We do have a new day, a new dawning in this country to make it what we want to make it. And I say reach out to everyone you know in figuring out the best way forward. And I think together we can do this. 
You know, I think one thing that I heard happened in California last night in two different places, Northern California, Southern California. In Oakland, I guess, there were a lot of people who were very unhappy uh, about Donald Trump's win and gathered and, you know, blocked freeways and created a commotion. And, you know, it, and in Southern California, I understand that some college students uh, tried to get on, you know, block block cars and one person I believe got hit and broke a leg and you know this is what we've for eight years allowed to happen this is what for eight years the administration has condoned and it's going to take a while for people to realize that you know we're not going to be doing things this way we're going to do things differently people are going to have to be arrested and removed they're going to have to understand that their rights are no more important than anybody else's rights. They're going to have to understand that following the law for all of us is paramount. That we're not going to be able to go out and, and block traffic and stand in the road and it be okay. You know, We have a president now who condones that behavior and that's why it's gotten worse. We have a president who just absolutely... I guess, doesn't care what's going on because he continues to allow it to to happen and doesn't intervene. But I think under Trump, you're going to see uh, a new way of handling those things. Yeah, I think you're going to see lawlessness stop. You're going to see people like police officers uh, who are not going to be under a federalized system as this ad current administration would, I believe, like to see. Uh, it, it is going to be new, but you're going to have to be patient because, again, the people that that are out there in the streets right now, they're doing what they've done for the past eight years. And you may see it escalate for a while because, you know, it's it's like uh, when you have a child. <laughs> and, 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 and this, as a psychotherapist, it's, I know this because I, I've seen this. If you reinforce inappropriate behavior, by not stopping it, for example. If you allow people to go out in the middle of the road, block cars, do whatever they want, and you don't stop it. When you try to stop it, it escalates. You know, if you've ever had a child and, and you, for example, they're misbehaving, and in the past you've allowed them to continue to misbehave because you've been busy, you're tired, you don't want to stop it. And so all of a sudden you realize, my gosh, it's gotten out of hand I really have to stop this. So what do you do? You start going to that child, giving them a consequence for their poor behavior. And the kid's like, excuse me? I have been doing this now for the last eight years. And uh, if you think I'm going to stop, you're crazy. And what, are they, what does the child do? He or she escalates the behavior. Because they're going to test you to see if you're really going to make them stop. And they've been able to sort of beat you down in the past. And you haven't made them stop in the past. So they're counting on the fact that you didn't do it in the past. You're going to give up in the future. You're going to go back to doing what you were doing. And they can just go back to, to misbehaving and getting away with it and, and, and having a great time. And, and that's exactly when you try to stop them, it escalates. It always gets worse before it gets better. But if you're diligent and you keep at it and you continue for the child to lay down the law, you know, impose the, the consequence, over time, the child realizes, I'm not going to get away with this. It's an uphill battle. I'm not going to win. They're going to win. I'm going to stop. And they also realize over time that things are better for them. They don't have the angst and the anxiety. They can enjoy themselves. They can get more privileges and do more things. Now, I don't like, my analogy is not to say that everybody who's out there in the middle of the street and doing what they do is a child or acting like one. My analogy is just to give you an analogy. Let's get the PC out of the way. But I think the people who are out there in the middle of the street, they're frustrated. And for the last eight years, they've been given a platform anywhere they wanted that platform to do what they wanted to do, whether it broke the law, whether it inconvenienced anyone else, whether it, it caused problems, they didn't care. And they're going to have to learn that the way to get what they want 
is A, to work with other people. And that you don't always get what you want if it's not for everyone's benefit. Or for your own, even. I mean, some of the things that people ask for, it's not really for their own benefit. It, it has no benefit a lot of times. Or it just hurts other people. So we have to look at things, and we're going to have to start educating people. You have to look at things to see what's best for everyone. What's best for you? What's best for somebody else? And then we'll work to see, like, to get you know, the goals fulfilled if they're feasible and if it's they should be fulfilled but going out in lawlessness and and trying to get what you want and and trying to affect other people it's we can't allow that to continue let's work together that's the message you know make america great again by working together that's my message for today and i can't i can't strive and and stress that enough because we have to work together that's how donald trump got elected and that's what we need to continue to do and and not allow the the strife that we've seen for the past 8 years to continue it can't be us against them it has to be we're all in this together and that's the way we need to move forward you know and also i want to say i've i've had other people come forward to me this morning the people who were never trumpers and say you know, I'm really concerned, though, because with Donald Trump, it's, you know, I just think that he's going to, he's going to take away our, our rights, and he's going to use the pen like Obama did, and, and I'm, I'm really concerned, and it's just not going to be good. And I, and I understand how they feel, because a lot of people, um, TV hosts, and radio hosts, and others, have made them feel that that's the only thing that Donald Trump is going to do, <laughs> that it's a definite decision that's already been made Donald Trump is going to take our rights away and he's going to use the pen like Obama you know what I'm ready as I said before to to wipe the slate clean and see where this is going to go I am also uh, aware that Donald Trump is not going to be given a pass like the first African-American president was because of the fact that he's the first African-American president so Donald Trump's not going to be able to hide behind that and, and get a pass for that. Uh, also, we as Americans, you know, under the Obama administration, we kind of just handed over our power as American citizens because we were too afraid to do anything, many of us, uh, because of political correctness. And if anybody's ever heard me, I don't think, <laughs> I think you know that's not one of the things that I concern myself with. Uh, maybe I should, but I don't. Um, and But because we were concerned about it, we didn't speak out about Obama. We didn't, we didn't try to go, you know, through legal channels to get what we could get. We, we, we would start fighting, and then we would stop. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the people that we have, you know, quote-unquote, representing us, uh, Republicans in Congress, didn't do their job. So it's going to be more difficult for them now not to do their jobs, not that they want to do their jobs, because I think many of them, as we all know, they're rhinos. They would rather just go in there, get a paycheck, uh, you know, go do their speeches, get their lobbyists to give them more money, whatever the case may be, uh, stay in a career for 30 years, retire, and then go home. Well, we can't allow them to be doing that. We need to return to checks and balances of our government. That's why we have the three branches. So there can be checks and balances. And maybe that requires the convention of states to make that happen. You know, I don't know. We need to return to more states' powers than we've had. We need to, we need to shrink the government. And if, you know, again, if you think Donald Trump is not going to do that, then you need to help him along. If this is what the American public wants, you need to help him along in making that decision to do the right thing. Because that's what we've done in the past. And we, we've got to quit giving GOP representatives a pass. You know, when they don't do what they're supposed to do, 
You know, I mean, a lot of people have said, oh, well, gosh, why, why bother? Why call the Congress? They're not going to do what what we want to do anyway, so it doesn't do any good. I, I, I understand your frustrations. I've been there. Trust me. I'm dialing the phone and getting no response, and nobody seems to care. I get that. But we can't continue to do what we do. We, it, we have to fight for this country. We have to fight for our freedoms. If anything about this election has taught us, we almost lost our freedoms. We really almost lost them. And if Donald Trump tries to take them away and, and do what he should do, then we need to stand up in numbers and legally go through the process that says, no, not on my watch. And I think instead of thinking that Donald Trump is going to do X, Y, and Z, let's give him an opportunity to show us what it is that he can do. And again, it's no president coming in is going to be the perfect president. And if that president starts going down a wrong road... Unlike Obama, we need to call them on it. We need to say no. And, and you know, I, I don't know about you. I'm tired of seeing golf trip after golf trip after golf trip. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. Do you deserve a vacation? Absolutely you do. But I am sick and tired of seeing the extravagant vacations on the American public's dime. Tired of it. That has to stop. And I'll tell you, if, if Donald Trump, I know he has his own money, and it, if, but if he turns out being like Obama in trip after trip, you're going to hear me roar because I am tired of it. And I'm going to do whatever I can, you know, in, in, in my pledge of doing whatever I can to, to put this country on the right path and keep it on there. That means watching this president who's coming in to make sure he does what's right for this country, that he follows the Constitution, that he remembers who put him in office, and that he remembers who he serves. And I don't care who he is. I I don't care who the person is in office. They need to remember that. And, And it's our job to remind them of that. We cannot go silent again. This, this was an uphill spiritual battle that we fought. And, it, and if you don't believe that it was a spiritual battle, then, okay, you and I disagree. But I'm telling you, it was a spiritual battle all the way. And I'm not willing to go silent now and say, oh, okay, we have whatever we have, and I'm done. No, sorry. Our jobs are just beginning. And you and I need to continue to be vigilant, to continue to do what we can for this country so that we don't go back to where we've been for the past eight years. We came so close, so close in losing our freedoms over to socialism in this country. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, Donald Trump is going to be a socialist. Okay, I don't know that. (laughs) To me, he is a businessman. He's a capitalist. He starts going down that socialist path. He's going to hear from me, and I suspect he's going to hear from you and others. We have an opportunity to do it right, to change things. And the one thing I know for sure, it's absolutely not going to be easy to do. We have no time to waste we can't sit back and relax. We can't say, oh, well, we have a, we have a chance to breathe now. No, we've got to be working now. We have to be working now before Trump even sets foot in the door. And we have to be even more vigilant now because of what may come in the next couple of months before Obama leaves. Can you imagine the people that he is going to pardon? I, it wouldn't surprise me if I, I see you know, Manson walking around on the streets pretty soon. And I'm being sarcastic there, but, you know, with Obama, it's a possibility. But the reason right now that we have difficulties, the reason right now that our, that our, you know, crime rate has gone up and everything else is because of Obama. Keep your eyes focused on God. Keep your eyes focused on what you need to do, what your job is here, moving this country forward. 
And that's between you and God. Whatever you're called to do, I, I offer you an opportunity to just come forward, tell us what it is you're going to do, and, and try to get as many people as possible to follow you and do what it is that you're supposed to do, and we'll all be working for the same thing. I'm hoping that people will come forward and work with me on it. God bless you. Until next time, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. God bless you. God bless Israel. And God bless America.